Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I have a massive camera comparison for all Pixel users. As a Pixel user myself since the Pixel 2 XL, I was curious to know which one takes better photos, especially after the dramatic changes Google took in the recent years, like moving from the Snapdragon processors to Tensor and from the 12 megapixel sensor to the 50 megapixel one. I didn't want to do this comparison on my own. But I did ask for your opinions in 14 different posts to collect your votes on 8 different models. And today's comparison will include the Pixel 2 XL, the 3 XL, the Pixel 4 XL, the Pixel 4a, the Pixel 5, the 6 Pro, the 6a, and finally the 7 Pro. Before starting, let me show you how the comparison will take place. I have a total of 8 models, so I classified them into two groups, Group A and Group B. Then I shared the photos with you to collect your votes on which camera you like the most. And in this video what I will do is, I will take the winning photo from each group based on your votes and start comparing them side by side. I will totally ignore the differences in the looks as it depends on your personal preference, but I will compare anything else like the level of details, the noise, the HDR, and the handling the bright light sources. And based on this, I will declare the winner of each category. Just a quick disclaimer before starting, this comparison is made to show you the differences in the image processing and it only compares the main and the front cameras, as some phones don't have ultra-wide or telephoto lenses. Also, it doesn't include any of the features that are exclusive to certain models like motion photos, face unblur, night side portraits, etc. So let's start with the first shot. And here are the photos of group A. I received a total of 50 votes at the time of filming this video, only 49 were valid. And you will be surprised that the winner is the Pixel 2 XL with a total of 20 votes. And the closest competitor is the 3 XL with a total of 13. It seems like the more contrast of the 2 XL was well received by the vast majority. Moving to group B, the votes were 66 and the valid ones were 62. And the winner is the Pixel 6a with a total of 31 votes. I was surprised that the Pixel 5 didn't win this comparison as it has the most contrast like the Pixel 2 XL but it came in the second place with a total of 21 votes which is still an indicator that Pixel users prefer to have more contrast. Now let's compare the top rated phones of each group, the 2 XL and the 6a. In the final round the winner will take 2 points and only 1 point for the second place. By the way, this is not a portrait shot, but the background is blurry as the phones were too close to the subject. But beside the looks, both have great HDR performance, so the only thing remaining to compare is the level of detail. I tapped to focus on the flower while shooting this one, so let's zoom all the way in to see which one did better. And surprisingly, the 2XL did much better in nailing the focus and producing better details, even though it's 4.5 years older than the 6A. So the win goes to the 2XL in the first round with 2 points versus only 1 point to the 6A. Next we have a portrait shot. Now you know the letter that represents each phone so I'm not gonna keep repeating this and you will also see the score of each camera next to its name. Starting with group A, this time I received a total of 102 votes, only 92 were valid and the 4XL took this one with a total of 43 votes and the closest second was the 4A with 33 votes. Moving to group B, I only got 75, 73 out of which were valid, and the 7 Pro took this one with 38 votes, while the rest of the phones were far behind. So let's put the 4XL and the 7 Pro neck to neck. Right off the bat, the 7 Pro has better HDR as the sky is not blown out. When it comes to the details, the 7 Pro once more is better because of the higher resolution, but the 4XL is very close. Moving to the subject isolation and both showed some errors, the 7 Pro was worse around my ears, while the 4XL blurred a bigger part from my neck and beard. So they are equal in the subject isolation and that means that the win goes to the 7 Pro for the better details and the HDR, but I'm impressed by the 4XL performance considering that it's a three and a half years older. Now let's move to the selfie portraits. The total votes on group A were 54 and 53 were valid, the 4XL and the 4A got the same number of votes which is 16 and the 2XL was very close at 14 votes but the 3XL was far behind. On group B the votes were only 37 which is very low but the majority voted for the 6 Pro with a total of 12 votes. So now let's compare the 6 Pro to the 4XL and the 4A to see which one is the best. 
Starting with the HDR, the 4A was the worst as the sky was a bit blown out, while the 4XL and the 6 Pro were identical. Moving to the details, the 6 Pro was the best followed by the 4XL and the 4A image was blurry. In the subject isolation, the 6 Pro was perfect, I couldn't spot any errors. The 4A comes second with only one error between my ear and neck. And the 4XL was the worst with two errors, one at my neck and the other one around my hair. So the 6 Pro is the winner in the selfie portrait with two points. The 4XL comes second with one point for being better than the 4A in the HDR and the details, while the 4A was third with zero points. Next, we have a normal landscape shot. Group A got 32 votes, and the 3XL was the winner by far getting 14 votes, and the closest second was the 4XL with nine votes. And I think the reason was it's the warmest out of the four. In group B, the votes were very low, only 23, and 20 out of which were valid. It was very hard to pick one as they almost look identical, but the 7 Pro got the win with 8 votes. So let's see if the 3XL or the 7 Pro will win. In the HDR both were identical so nothing to compare here, and in this shot I tapped to focus on the building, so let's see which one has more details. Surprisingly the 3XL showed more details despite its lower resolution, but with a bit more noise due to the software sharpening. While the 7 Pro tried to balance between the two, resulting in a softer image with less noise. So I will call this one a draw and give two points to each phone. One final thing to compare in the morning shots that I didn't include in the votes is how each camera handled the bright lights like the sun. In group A, the Pixel 4a was the best for two reasons. First, it had the least amount of lens flares. Secondly, the shadows are much more detailed when compared to the rest of the phones as I can clearly see everything without an issue. Moving to Group B and the 7 Pro was the worst in the amount of lens flares followed by the 6 Pro and both used the new 50 megapixel sensor, while the Pixel 5 and the 6a were better and both used the older 12 megapixel sensor. So I think Google needs to address this problem in the Pixel 8 models. Not only this, but the 5 and the 6a also showed much more details in the shadows while the Pro versions were too washed out and you can barely see any details. Not to mention that the 6 Pro is even worse than the 7 Pro. So both are out of the competition. But if I'm gonna choose between the Pixel 5 and the 6a, I see the 6a did better in terms of details, so it's the winner in this group. Now let's compare the winners of group A and the group B, which are the Pixel 4a and the 6a. First, the 4a once more has the least amount of flares, and I highlighted those areas for you to quickly spot them. But in the shadows, the 6a showed more details. So I will call it a draw and give two points to each phone. So let's take a look at the morning results. The Pixel 5 is the only phone that didn't get any points yet. The 7 Pro is the winner with four points. The 6a comes second with three points, while the rest have the same score of two points each. Now let's move on to the night photos. Starting with the normal landscape, the 4a took this one by far, with a total of 20 votes and the closest second got 12. In group B, the votes were much lower, but the 6A won by 7 votes, followed by the 6 Pro that only got 6, which is very close. Now let's compare the 4A and the 6A. First, the 4A has less noise in the sky, and when it comes to the details, I think both are identical, but still the 6A has more noise. So I will give the win to the 4A. Next, the portraits. In group A, the 4XL took this one, same as the morning portraits, with 15 votes, and the closest second was the 3XL at 8 votes. Moving to group B, the 7 Pro took it as well, same as the morning portraits, with 22 votes. But just for your info, the 6A is the only phone that chose the correct t-shirt color in this group, same as the Pixel 4XL in group A. But as promised, I will not talk about the looks, so let's compare the winner of each group, the 4XL and the 7 Pro. Right off the bat, the 7 Pro has slightly better details as expected, and this time the 4XL had more errors in the subject isolation, so the win goes to the 7 Pro for the more advantages it has. Now it's time for selfies, and here I used night sight on all of them. And I didn't use portrait mode as some models don't support portraits with night sight. Anyways, the Pixel 4XL won this comparison by 20 votes, and the closest second only got 5, which is a massive difference. In Group B, you will notice how the newer models starting from the 6 Pro and later have a totally different style that represents the scene more accurately, rather than brightening up everything and give a cooler tone like the older models. 
but this didn't stop Pixel users from preferring the old style and for the first time, the Pixel 5 won this comparison with 19 votes, but the 6a was very close getting 18 votes. Now let's compare the 4XL and the 5. It's obviously so hard to choose one over the other as they almost look identical, but let's see which one has more details. And even here, they are identical. But let's try another spot hoping that one of them will win. And in the background, the 4XL showed more details, and that's the only reason for it to take the win from the Pixel 5. Now the only thing remaining to test is handling the light sources. Right off the bat, the 4XL and the 4A has the least amount of red lens flares when compared to others. But when I zoom in on the background, you will see that the 4A and the 3XL showed more details and less noise than the other two. But because the 4A has less lens flares, so it will take the win as it was the best in everything. In group B, as expected, the 50 megapixel sensors are the worst when it comes to the amount of flares, same thing we saw in the morning photos. The Pixel 5 has the least amount of flares followed by the 6a. Looking at the shadows and the highlights, the 6a and the 7 Pro were the best at balancing the exposure, as the other two were overexposed, especially the Pixel 5. So let's zoom all the way in on the background to check the level of details. And here the 5 and the 6 Pro were the most detailed, followed by the 6a and the 7 Pro was the worst. So I think I need to choose between the 5 and the 6a. The 5 is better than the 6a in the details and lens flares, but the overexposure has a big impact on the overall result, so I think I will call it a draw between the 5 and the 6a. Now let's compare all three, the 4a, the 5, and the 6a. Again, the 5 is still the best when it comes to the lens flares, followed by the 4a, and the 6a is the worst. But the 4a and the 6a photos have better exposure. In the details and noise, the 4a was the best, followed by the 5, and the 6a comes last. So the win goes to the 4a, followed by the 5 and the 6a in the second place with one point for each. Now let's take a look at the overall numbers. The 7 Pro and the 4a came first with a score of 6 points, the 6a and the 4xl came second with 5 points each, while the rest of the phones got 2 points. I didn't expect the numbers to go this way, as all phones got the same exact scores, which means each phone does one or two things right and lags behind in the rest of things. For example, the 7 Pro has the best portraits and morning landscape shots, but it messed up the HDR. While the Pixel 4a gives the best HDR and night landscape shots, but it's not great in portraits. So that tells us that Google doesn't focus on improving everything at the same time with every new release, but the improvements are random. So please let me know what do you think in the comments. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you the next video.